This computer took over a year to complete and it almost didn't make it. Today I'm going to tell the tale of the cursed gaming PC. But let's start building it first, shall we? And it went into storage for a very long time and was never seen ever again. Uh, but I did return to it eventually, so let's go over its initial parts before things went downhill. I bought the core of the system way, way, way back in March of 2021. I found a parts only MSI Z270A Pro motherboard being sold for a pretty decent price. And I saw that the seller also had some DDR4 RAM, 16 gigs of some time tech stuff for also very cheap. So. I asked if they could bundle the two together for a discounted price, and I ended up snagging that up for I think around $50. Now, while the seller did say the motherboard was faulty, upon testing it, with that one CPU I was talking about in the last video, that's the CPU that's going into this build, it posted without an issue. The issue that did arise, however, was that one of the DDR4 sticks was faulty, there was a resistor or something that was missing, I believe, and I think it prevented the system from posting at all, which was not good. So, this time tech memory, like a lot of memory brands had a lifetime warranty so I wanted to see if they would hold up to their end of the bargain. Now I was concerned that since I technically didn't have proof of original purchase they wouldn't replace my stick of RAM but thankfully they were understanding and I got a brand new stick of DDR4 for the 16 gig kit. Awesome. The CPU you must be dying to know about is nothing special really. In the CPU lot I bought prior, I got two i5 4590s, an i5 6500, and a 7500. I sold the 4590s which I realized I was incorrect on the order of how I bought things because I thought I bought this lot to put the memory in the Dells, but no, I, I got this way before. So I kinda regret selling both 4590s, but anyway, th the only CPU I actually kept was the i5 7500 because I already had the MSI board and RAM. The next thing I acquired if I'm not mistaken was a CPU cooler. A friend of mine and a longtime subscriber was moving out and gave me a bunch of stuff he didn't need. One of these items was his Enermax CPU cooler. All it needed was a new fan but this system was missing many other things so I kind of just worried about it until it became an actual problem. So since this was mostly incomplete it kind of sat collecting dust for a while. Over that summer however I got my hands on a graphics card. Another friend of mine was parting with an R9 290 and asked if I wanted it. I graciously accepted as you'd expect. It it's only issue issue was that it didn't have the shroud so the graphics card couldn't actually stay cool. You see blower fans are designed to push air out so in cards like I don't know the reference 780 Ti or in, in this case the R9 290 the fan spins and blows air through the heatsink out of the card but without the shroud the air just blows all over the place. I didn't figure out a plan for that card for a while and that ultimately was the last issue I had problems with. I'll touch on that later but back to our little Z270 based PC I saw a deal for a Fantex P300 case on Newegg, even though I never received my rebate, not thank you Fantex, and I thought it would be perfect for this kinda blacked out system. Storage I kinda already had planned out. I got an SSD with I think the A320 board, and since this MSI motherboard was the only one that could take an M.2 SSD, I planned on putting it in there. For mass storage, I got a WD Green a little later on, but I'll get to that and many other things later. I got a Seasonic power supply off of Reddit for like 45 bucks, and despite the kinda ugly cables, it was nice that it was a modular unit, so that's always cool. So let's take a step away from this incomplete PC and talk about the graphics card. I found it amazing amazing how difficult it was to find a remedy to my cooling situation. Air-cooled solutions were pretty impractical for pricing, and I couldn't even really find a replacement shroud or like a broken card with a cooler for this card. I probably could have, but I took the great approach of water cooling. I found a sealed Corsair HG10A1 for the R9290 for only 25 bucks off of eBay. This was a cooling adapter that allowed you to mount a Corsair AIO onto your graphics card. So I got the 290 all disassembled, and I put the bracket onto the card. It wasn't for a while until I finally actually got my hands on a cheap Corsair H100i V2 for 25 buckaroos. I got it installed into the case and onto the graphics card or whatever, but then I had to pack all of my things because my family was moving at the time, so kind of just 
through everything that was loose inside the case and I didn't touch that box until recently. While visiting home from college, I took the box holding the computer to my dorm and this is where my troubles began. First of all, I didn't have a fan for my cooler and I thought the cooler was missing the fan mounts but nope, I just didn't know what they originally looked like so they are lost in storage somewhere. But I bought a cheap PWM fan and needed a way to mount it to the cooler. I went through about like... 30 zip ties before I realized this isn't going to work. So I got a ride for my roommate to go to Harbor Freight and I just bought some wire similar, if not the same, as what's used for CPU coolers and such. I cut some lengths that I needed and made my own mount for the fan. Nice. But now I've got a problem. The graphics card. Oh boy, this, this was a very bad time and the amount of time spent on this was absolutely ridiculous. So first of all, the AIO was dead on arrival. The pump was dead. There was no response from the pump. The pump was dead. So I bought another used AIO for some strange reason. This Origin H60 with a broken fan. The fan wasn't a problem. I had fans I could just steal the ones from the H100i. The, the problem was that the Hydro AIO bracket uses either AMD or Intel mounting hardware and lucky for me I had forgot the mounting standoffs that were compatible with the Intel layout back at home. Great, it, it's fine, it's fine. So I get the brilliant idea to just 3D print my own standoffs because why not? Like don't go buy it off the internet. But no, I, I couldn't find any replacements on the internet. I mean, granted, there were some places that I don't believe I looked, but this was more of a project that I was trying to get done quickly. I go to a school where I'm lucky enough to have access to things like 3D printers and such, so I reverse engineered the size standoff I needed with the help of one of the lab mentors. I did some test prints, and it's crazy the level of detail I got, actually. The threads were really unbelievable. Finally think I got a finished product for the standoff, so... I am going to bike back to my dorm and we'll try it out. Oh, if only I knew it was in store for me. If only. Other than breaking a standoff because it was plastic, the graphics card was still taking off. So I tried another approach the next day. I just got out of the John Bardo Center behind me where the lab is and I'm going to hop on my bike and go back to my dorm. I think I got a good uh, finished product, so Hopefully it works, we'll see. Nope, I don't think it will. Then I tried another approach. Um, we're just walking back from the John Barta Center once more. Um, I got some new parts printed. Um, I only got two screws. I cut the size, I had to cut some M3 screws, but um, two should be enough um, points of mounting pressure. And no, it was not enough points of mounting pressure. I was tired of this computer. I can't begin to tell you how many times I mounted and unmounted the cooler. No matter what I did, the GPU would simply just fly away. Ah! 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 It seemed that the pump was running, but I was definitely having some contact issues. It turns out that this bracket was notorious for having issues because it was easy to warp during installation, causing any cooler attached to be unable to make proper contact. The H60 is a smaller AIO and the R9290 is a very hot graphics card, but nonetheless, a 120mm cooler would be just enough to tame this beast. I was pretty much over the system until I realized something. I had this graphics card in my brother's system previously, and I used the more DIY approach since I didn't have a Corsair AIO on hand. I got some mounting hardware from the store and attached the Vetro V240 cooler I had onto the card. It took some tweaking because I had to get even or even enough pressure onto the GPU die so that it didn't overheat. It did take a while but I did eventually get it on and it ran solid. I took it off just because I replaced the card in that system with a 1060 but I came to the realization that my last option was to just put that cooler on. I didn't recall how I installed it the first time because I did it without the Corsair bracket. I hoped everything would work as I had my dad ship it out to me so I could install it onto the card. After a bunch of troubleshooting, a bunch of, you know, trial and error with these uh, standoffs I made here for the focus. Yeah. Um, after all of that nonsense, I ended up just getting the uh, V240 AIO. My dad actually shipped it to me. I got it the other day. Got it all installed. Idles very nicely, actually. Uh, let me pull up hardware info here. Um, I ended up just using technically the same um, mounting hardware. We mean battery exhausted. If my camera battery doesn't die again, let me pull up the uh, idle temperatures here, the hardware info. So like funnily enough, like CPU is doing all right. Probably just need to repaste, but our graphics card right here, 33 degrees Celsius. Um, I'm not using the greatest thermal paste. It's kind of 
dry it up, but also it's just kind of a weird consistency. Um, but yeah, 33 on idle, um, 240mm AIO. Uh, the V240 never really had the best fans in terms of, I guess, for for water cooling anyway. But like, it, it does the trick. Um, it really works well in this small um, space as well because you can kind of bend the um, tubes. Um, I couldn't do that with the two Corsair AIOs. Well, not the uh, H100. Uh, H100i that died, so, but despite that, um, I got the cooler on, I just used, I technically used the HG10 uh, mounting holes, funnily enough, because um, I, I went to go cut those screws, they ended up working, they put enough pressure, because they weren't like exactly like right at the threading, so I could kind of push down and then start to screw it in, so there's enough pressure on the GPU to keep it cool, so, yeah, it's, uh, been much too long. I literally bought this motherboard over a year ago. I bought it March of 2021. So I've had a lot of these parts for like a very long time, but I finally completed the system. Um, the hardware, uh, for better or for worse, is finally completed. This graphics card I've had for even longer. Um, but yeah, I conveniently lost my benchmarking results, but for the games that I did test, this system was an absolute champ. The 7th gen i5 is definitely still capable, and ended up pairing nicely with the R9 290. Minimal if any stuttering in certain titles, despite being a long project, the system in the end came together very nicely. I listed it on a marketplace in Wichita and my home city, as I was going to visit there soon upon completion of the PC. And I'm glad I did, because I ended up selling it to a guy for I think like either 475 or 375. I know that's like a big difference, but I'm almost positive it's one of those two. So yeah, that's the tale of one of the most recent computers I've sold and why it was cursed. I forgot to mention earlier, the uh, you know that WD Green Drive I bought? That was definitely a rival, so I had to buy another one. Uh, but it was funny because I bought a basically identical like WD Green 2 terabyte, um, which for some reason I thought was a good idea. But anyways guys, if you got something out of this video, show some love by hitting that like button. While you're there, consider subscribing to the channel and enable notifications for more quality tech content. Anyways, as always, thanks for watching and I will see you later.